Hello, hello everyone. We have got the first week in September now. You may be thinking that means autumn and winter are coming, things are going to stop growing, the garden kind of like can rest for a bit, but that's not the case. There are still loads of jobs to get done, there are still loads of things growing, I'm still sowing seeds and doing the odd bits and bobs, so I'm just going to take you through it all today. So what I'm taking you through today then is, uh, I'm going to show you the blackberries because we've, that wee week we had the holiday, we got some bits and bobs done, so I'm going to show you that. Um, it's the end of season for the beans. I will talk to you about why that's the case and they're all getting taken out and that bed is then going to get some autumn winter stuff sewn in it. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about that because there's some things you need to know about. Um, and then also, these nets are all going to get replaced. There's huge holes in these and I'll speak to you more about the why we're going to do that when we get onto it. So let's start with the blackberries then. So the blackberries then, as I said, we jobbed on while we were off and it is this. As you can see, we've changed it up a little bit. May as well just have one while I'm here. So one of the big things we did then, right, oh, blackberries. I, as you guys know, I called out and I asked for some advice on these because I had never grown them before. And it all sounds very, very simple, but I suspect it's a tiny bit more complicated. So I've got it set up the way it is just now, but I'll probably have to change this once I find out it's wrong. But for now, blackberries grow on new growth. So canes that have grown this year will be the canes that bear flowers and fruit next year. And the canes from this year will get cut away because they're of no use anymore. What happened though? As you can see, that new growth got really, really long and we had some quite heavy duty winds and they were getting snapped and damaged. So we hadn't intended to do this just yet and we've had to jump in and do it a bit quicker. So what you can see now is we have put wires up along the fence and these canes are tied into those wires so they're grown along the fence, keeping them all safe and rigid and we don't have to worry about winds that way. Okay, so this is the idea. So what I've got then is four of these wires going along the fence and at various points along I've got this little covered soft wire just tying in those canes and I just keep going. Every time I get new stuff, I go and I tie it in. So it doesn't need to be tight. So you can see there, it's just this bit of wire and it's just held in place by these screw and eyelets at various points along the fence. And that's it, it's that simple. And then as I go, I'm just tying in with these soft bits of wire. And you'll see there, it's just lots of new growth, it's getting longer and I'll keep tying in. But there's another thing that I have to think about here. Okay. And it's this, do you see these? So these are the main canes grown horizontally and then coming out of them are these spurs. Okay, and I suspect these spurs are what are going to have the fruit and flowers on them. So I'm not sure about if this is the right way to do it because I imagine these are going to get quite heavy and they're going to pull down that way. So um, things may need to change, but I was trying my best to follow the instructions that were out there because a lot of it was tying it in and chopping things back at this time of year, but there wasn't a lot of follow-up so I could see how it had grown and stuff. So I'm learning as I go and I'm bringing you guys on the, the learning journey with me. But that's the blackberries. So two plants, one on this side, which is the very, very long canes going this way. This is Loch Ness. Both of them are thornless cultivars, big, big berries on them. I've got this one here as well which is the one that got really badly damaged in the winds. This one is Loch Tay. It's only given us a few berries, this one, whereas this one has given us loads this year, which is amazing considering it's the first year. So that's what we got done the wee week that we had the break because we'd been putting off doing it for filming and stuff and it was just starting to get to us. So we just got it done.
So the next thing then, I need to get some stuff done with the beans, so I'll take you over there. So, beans. Oh, the beans have been a stupendous success this year, especially given that I was saying I couldn't grow green beans, they never worked. So this year, we have had so many beans and I've pretty much been forcing them on the neighbours. Out in the evening, picking the beans for tonight's dinner. How awesome is this? I have never had success with green beans before. So, it's cobra and they seem to have done really well. Because I think that's plenty for tonight's tea. Now, tomatoes. Um, but the thing is, let me show you. The thing is, with green beans, you have to pick them when they're all nice and small and tender and we just couldn't keep up with the amount we were getting because I planted too many plants. So they're all getting to this really massive and quite tough and leathery stage and you don't want to eat them when they're like that. Now, if I'd had half a brain, I wouldn't have planted so many plants to start with and I would have brought them on at different stages. So you'll have heard of succession planting and that's what that means. So I would have planted plants at different times so they were in different stages of growth and therefore when this plant is all horrible and beans you don't want to eat the next plant would just be bringing on the nice new tender beans for us that way I could have controlled the amount of beans that we were having to pick and I could have always got them when they were all nice and lovely so I didn't do that and these plants have passed so that means they're all going to get chopped down but not to fret about it. This is just one of the things that happens at this time of year. It's all part and parcel of managing your garden and managing your growing, okay? So don't get all down when you have to take things out, cut it all back and stuff. It's what happens. I'm going to use that bed for something else. So it's also a bit exciting. Now, I've already started and I'll show you that in a second. But first, I need to get all these beans. And the thing is, of course, there's not really any such a thing as waste in the garden because this all goes in the composter and that turns into the compost that feeds and nourishes the garden next year. So, you know, if we're not getting to eat it, at least the garden is. So I am actually taking down the entire plants, but how they grow is they're all entwined. So... There's no quick way to do it. So, of course, I'll chop back. I can now take down this framing that we built and that'll get tied up and put aside ready for next year for whatever we're growing on it next year. It's a nice big meal for the compost bin. Canes can get stored away for next year. <sighs> so, before I get on to what I'm going to do with the bean bed, because I said earlier I'm going to do a wee bit of sowing and planting, I'm going to make some changes because all my beds have these nets on them, which are basically the bird proofing nets. I've got them on here for two reasons. One, obviously, is the birds. Um, they originally were on here because of all the kind of things I was growing, like strawberries, etc. The birds were coming and nicking um, and like little seedlings and stuff. They were pecking at them and eating them. But the second thing is because we had real issues with random stray cats and foxes and things digging in the beds overnight. So the nets were on to deter them as well. Now, and they're awesome and you guys know I love my hinged hoop covers and my nets. It's dead convenient because, like I say, it's on hinges. But these don't stop things like butterflies, they don't stop insects. 
And as you know, I've planted some pak choy, I've planted some radishes, and I've planted some winter gem lettuce. Unfortunately, they are getting hammered by caterpillars because the butterflies are getting through these nets. So we're replacing these with insect knitting, and that's the next job. As you can see that's two beds done the insect netting is on here it is much much finer um, this is probably the kind of thing you'll see if you watch a lot of videos from folk with allotments you probably see this kind of stuff um, but the idea is that this will stop everything we word of warning though if you're using this remember it's going to stop pollinators so if you've got things in your beds that need pollinated like the courgettes you probably don't want to put this type of net in there. Just a wee note. Okay, let's have a look in here and I'll show you the damage the caterpillars are doing. So it's pretty much this. They're just eating little holes in all the leaves and they're just chomping their way through. Some of these bigger leaves, the ones at the bottom, are almost gone. And there is nothing you can do. <sighs> Steals. Yeah, so basically what you have to do, there is no way around this. Even with this netting on there, you will still have the random insects that will get in. Or maybe we're already there before I put the net on. All you can do really is you just go through the leaves. So every day if you're out, you're in the garden anyway, just lift the leaves up and look on the bottom and what you're looking for is any little caterpillars and you just pick them off or looking for little bunches of eggs basically so you're just looking for little groups of kind of little round dark spots like blacks or yellows or whatever and that's the caterpillar eggs anything like that you just pick everything off if there's eggs just get rid of the leaves and it's just systematically every day you do this. There's nothing, there's nothing fancy about it. This is all you can do. There's no magic to this. You have to just go through and pick them off as you find them. Because the thing is, two reasons. One, quite a lot of folk might be a bit squeamish about the whole idea of taking a lettuce indoors and finding caterpillars on it. Um, but the other thing is, when you're growing leafy crops, you kind of want the leaves. You don't want to have to share them and lose out on most of them with caterpillars and things. So that's how you deal with it. So I'm going to get sown some seeds in this bed now. And I'm going to answer a question that I keep getting asked. I get quite a few questions asking why don't I or 
would I do some of the monthly videos, you know, the kind of what to sew in August, what to sew in September, that type of thing. Now, I don't do those types of videos on purpose. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't think there's really much use to you guys because I can talk about what I'm doing, which is what I usually do, but that doesn't mean it's right for you. So you, you guys know I don't like videos where you just copy what I'm doing. I prefer you to think for yourself. I prefer for you guys to understand things so you can make decisions that work for you. So what I'm going to say is we are going to do some seeds that I'm going to sow, but as normal, the way I do things, I'm going to tell you about what I'm sowing, why I'm sowing it now, and the things you need to think about before you sow seeds. So here we go then. So you can see I have already made a start. I've got some things sewn in here already. Um, these are some daikon radish. Um, some people call them winter radish, muli radish. They're basically the big, long, thick, white radishes. Um, fine for kind of sewn August, September in my garden and my climate because they're quite quick to take and they're quite hardy. So this is one of the things you have to have a think about then. It is still not cold. It's probably a really bad way of saying it, so let's say it this way. It's not properly autumn cold yet. We still will find a few sow seeds. On a whole, the majority of them will germinate. But what you have to think about is how long have you got until the weather does change? Because those seeds might all germinate just now, but will those little seedlings cope once it gets cold? Because here, it's not long until our first frosts. We get our first frosts at the end of October. So I have to think about how long is there between now and that frost coming in, will those plants survive? So I look at anything I'm growing, I'm thinking, is it hardy? So you'll find a lot of things will have that in the name. So you'll get things like winter lettuce, autumn carrots, autumn king carrots, that kind of thing. So you want to be thinking about that. They may germinate just now, but will they keep growing as the temperature changes? The other thing you need to think about is light, because we hate to admit it, but the days are getting shorter when getting less and less sunlight. And all these little plants need a certain amount of sunlight. So will you have enough daylight hours as we go on through the months for these plants? One of the tricks then that a lot of people have is they're sown and grown things just now that are very, very quick to mature. Things that germinate fast and grow fast so that they can get a good crop out of it before the weather changes. That's one of the things you can do. And as I mentioned, the other thing is to make sure whatever you're growing is going to cope with the weather and temperature situations where you are. Um, now, in terms of, I was saying how a lot of YouTubers do these videos of what you can sew every month. One thing to be very aware of if you're watching those videos and you're thinking of copying them and growing the same things, are they sewing and growing outdoors or do they have a greenhouse or a polytunnel? Because there are a lot of things that I'll bring on in the greenhouse and plant out, which means they take faster, they grow faster. So then when I put them out, I'm not as worried about the amount of time I have. And one of the folk I saw do that this week was Steve from Greenside Up. Now you guys know Steve, he appeared here a few weeks back, but he this week put out some, what he called broccoli rab, or their broccolini, or in fact, I've got them here, they're Broccoletto Quarantino Riccio, okay? It's a broccoli rab type thing. Um, and he grew them on in his greenhouse and has put them out now because we're running out of time for that kind of thing. Well, what I've got here is one I've never actually tried before. And this is uh, a new variety that purports to grow to harvest within 45 days, say broccoli rab is normally 60 days. This is 45 days. And a such a debrati I've never tried before. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And its name, and wait for it, is Broccoletto Quarantino Riccio. And I haven't practiced that at all. <laughs> Um, so be aware of that. People may be sowing and growing in their polytunnels and greenhouses because they know that it will work. If you don't have a polytunnel or a greenhouse, have a think. You may not be able to do that stuff outdoors. But that's enough of me waffling.
So what am I sewing and growing then? Well, like I said, I'm doing the Mooley Radish. These are awesome. These are brilliant through autumn. Um, so these will keep going for a wee bit and they're very, very fast to come up and they grow fast. So I've got a line of these in. They actually come up in about a week. I was really impressed with these. But what I'm also going to be doing, um, I've got some standard pak choy in this bed. I'm going to be putting some more in this bed. I'm going to be putting it in some red stem. And again, this stuff will cope with the temperatures just now. But I won't be able to grow this out here all through winter. So I will be growing some in the greenhouse and that's how it'll keep me going. Now, as you guys know, if you know me, I usually get my seeds from Mr. Father Girls and that's who I always recommend. But Steve recommended Premier Seeds Direct. So I thought I'd give these a try. So this is the seeds that Steve has sown, Steve at Greenside Up. He has sown these in his greenhouse and he's put the little plants out now. Um, we will see how we go. I just thought they looked really interesting, sounded interesting. And we use broccolini on pizzas quite a lot and pasta and that kind of thing. So this will be very cool. So... Now, one of the things I always tell you guys is about reading your seed packets, okay? And one of the things that you'll notice is this seed packet doesn't really have much info on it. So make sure you look up all the details of the plants that you're sowing and keep a note in your gardening journal. Trust me, you will be thankful of keeping those notes. Okay, so I've sown these very thinly, but they will have to get thinned out, guaranteed. Rookie mistake. I need a label. I've left them in the greenhouse. Just make sure I've got that there before I cover everything over. And when you're sowing your seeds, make sure that your soil is nice and damp. Okay, it doesn't have to be soaking, but you want it to be nice and damp. And then you cover over and make sure those seeds are in contact with the soil. So the next one I'm going to do, I'll put the label in there, is the Pak Choi Red. Okay, so I've got standard green Pak Choi in the other bed. Just make a little drill here. And I'll just get these in again so thinly. If you sew thinly, you don't have to thin out later on, or not as much at least. Now, there is a temptation to just fill the bed because I've got the space, but we won't be able to eat that amount. So I'm going to leave it as is. When my lettuce, pak choy and radishes in that bed are finished, I've got space here so I can keep it going. Okay, while everything else is going on, just a quick one then. Do you know the score? Remember, if you guys don't watch these videos, there's kind of no point in me making them. I make them for you guys to watch. So if you're finding it useful, helpful <laughs> beasties so if you're finding it useful helpful etc hit that like button let me know you like this content leave a wee comment below and tell me how it's helping you and what you're doing in your garden and remember hit the subscribe button and use the little bell icon to choose your notifications it doesn't cost you anything to do but it's actually super helpful it helps me out because it lets youtube know that this channel is popular but it helps you because i sometimes post random videos at other times and you won't know but if you're subscribed you'll get a notification so you won't miss any of the good stuff right back to it <sighs> So 
So I just need to get the hinges back on this frame for this bed. Now that I can. Thank you for having us this week, guys. I hope that was interesting. Just a wee bit of fun in the garden. And I will keep you up to date on all the seeds and when they germinate. And I'll let you know how it's going with the wall of blackberries. Right, I've got a few little bits to finish off, but I'll see you next week.